Hello and you're very welcome to the JMAC Podcast. I'm John Mann and of course this podcast is brought to you by orgoretcher.com and Attack TD. Use a promo code JMAC Podcast to get 15% off on orgoretcher.com and get the best skins, gloves, equipment on Attack TD. Be a talk minded. And if you're liking what you're seeing, like and subscribe to YouTube because support's been absolutely brilliant so far. And today I'm joined by former Galway footballer Finney and Hanley to talk about his career. Um, the GA season today and the ins and outs of that and uh, how Galway are getting on at the minute. So Finney, how are you keeping? Good, John. Yeah, good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's uh, in the sunny west here, so it's, it's it's lovely today. Thank God. Super stuff, my man. Super stuff. And yeah, we have uh, we were treated to an absolutely brilliant uh, weekend of action uh, just gone in. And obviously, um, I was talking about my uh, review and preview there last night, but uh, Monhans uh, sank the dubs. Tyrone, Beck, Harry, uh, Mayo, uh, Beck, Lair, and lots of other action to talk with Finian. But um, what a weekend. And is it such a pity we won't be seeing it in the championship, really? It is, it is. Look, we're, we're blue in the face talking about it. And, uh, you know, I know it's a, it's a, an elephant in the room. And, and last year with the, uh, with the, the vote and everything that went with it, like surely, you know, Sunday, if Sunday, Sunday was anything to go by. It's surely time to look at change, you know, and, uh, we're resistant to change in the GAA in, Gary, in a lot of ways, but, uh, you know, most sports evolve. And I think, you know, without, you know, professionalism and all that coming in we have ways of tweaking this into a better 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 setup you know we're into provincial championships now which are grand but you know in my eyes they're outdated and Sunday showed that you can have an absolutely you know brilliant product in the summer with these teams playing each other regularly in in big games you know so um yeah look it was it, it, it was brilliant no one knew what was happening who was up who was down you know, Dublin are down. Division one is is super competitive now. It's super competitive, you know, and for Galway to Ross and Ross Common to be up there next year is great as well. Interesting to kind of hear your perspective on uh, Galway's trials and tribulations and like my probably opinion on it is Finian that it probably done the world of good for you is to kind of get relegated, get a bit get a bit of confidence back. It probably done poor choice the world of good, get his team uh, playing good football again. Christ did a great league two campaign, uh, Finian. So all good places for the championship and it probably done the world of good for you. It did, it did. Um, you know, look, we, we, we were blooding a lot. You know, a few lads had dropped off. You know, Gary O'Donnell, Gary Bradshaw, those guys had kind of left. So, you know, Porrick was looking to bring in a kind of a, a, a new, newer team, a lot of young guys, different type of player, you know, you know, you know, players that are well able to play football all over the park. Um, you know, and that took time. And, and, and there was a bit of a, a, a switch from, you know, on the emphasis from, a defensive kind of Kevin Walsh time, which really stabilised the county and got us, you know, to an All Ireland semi final in eighteen, and really, you know, really, it was it was a positive period for Galway. But to, you know, to fully change then into a more attack attack minded, that takes time, you know. So the last couple of years, it, it did take that period for for Galway to, to 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 start gelling. And I think Division Two, and, and we'll get onto the jobs in a bit, isn't a bad place to start growing. Um, particularly this year, it was quite weak. Um, so look, you know, Galway had a great league campaign. Obviously, there's stuff to tidy up before you go playing a Mayo or you know a, a, a battle hardened Division One team. But uh, now look, we found some players. Niall Daly scored five points from play the last day on his debut, uh, which is which is monster kicking for midfield. Um, you know, Sean Kelly, these guys have stepped up now into top class players. So you know, we we we'd be uh, optimistic heading to Castlebar to say the least but obviously Sunday comes first and uh, Roscommon would be no easy easy game in, in Crow Park 100% opinion and obviously like obviously the always outgoing opinion is that oh sure Galway had a great season up until the 2020 COVID and all his and just playing a great style of football and maybe after the COVID kind of things went downhill a bit but it's great to see strong Galway opinion they've always had absolutely brilliant players we go back to maybe Park Joyce we go back to uh, Michael Meehan and currently we have Damien Comer and um, Shane Walls probably one of the, some of the best players in Ireland at the minute opinion so we need a strong Galway it's great to see and uh, you're a happy man seeing the trials and tribulations at the minute I, I, yeah. Look, it's, it's, it, it's, you know, we're a funny whole county. You know, we, we, we've, you know, massive tradition in Galway over the years. And even when I was playing myself, you know, that bur- it's not a burden, but it's, it's there. And 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 recent All Ireland success, which is not recent now, but you know, at the time when I started, you know, we were off the back of two All Irelands, and we still had a lot of those players. So there was pressure to go again, uh, and that never materialised. And then kind of that. You know, those players weaned out and we had to kind of rebuild again and again, you know, and, and, and since 2001, we haven't really competed at all. You know, we do talk about tradition in Galway and Galway, you know, don't like systems. The supporters aren't interested in systems. They're into, you know, they're still living in the past a little bit and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. to our detriment and it's not good. 
that, you know, the game has evolved and we need to move with the times as well. So I think Park is trying to get the mix. He's trying to keep the Galway tradition, you know, the kick pass and these flair players, the Damians, the Shanes, you know, akin to the Jazz, the, you know, the Val Daly's, even going back to the, the, the Stockwells and, and these guys, those type of players. But, you know, the game has evolved. It's a running game now. There's a lot of defensive stuff that, that has to happen because of the way the game is. You know, you can't just say, I'm going to be a, an attacking team or a kicking team. You have to cut your cloth to suit and most opposition teams, particularly at a lower level, will have defensive setups. So you've got to mirror that. So look, you know, we've had to move with the times. It's taken a while. Um, are we the finished article? Is Cork's team the finished article? I don't think it is at, at the minute. Um, I think Mayo are, are very, very strong this year. Um, you know, they're, they're serious contenders and I think that's a massive game in Castle Barn in two weeks, in, sorry, three weeks time. Mm, mm, yeah, really looking forward to that game, Finian, and obviously, but I really do think that was good uh, preparation of the league, and obviously we'll see uh, this Sunday against Wisconsin. It'll be great stuff for Crow Park, and uh, just briefly kind of touching on the rest of the team's form. Obviously, uh, Dublin going down, Monaghan last minute heroics really for Jack McCarran once again. He seems to be doing it every single year for them, and uh, obviously Mayo's fortunes and Kerry's probably the strongest team throughout the league. So we had a very good probably overall uh, league campaign for a lot of teams, uh, Finian. We did, we did, yeah. No, look, it was good. It was, you know. You know, and the games that we saw on TV or whatever, or we were at, you know, they were all like particularly Division One. Every week was, you know, there was hell for leather. It was like teams going for it. Um, you know, and look, by right, last week or at the weekend, we had our field and maybe a weaker team, which was unusual, you know, because look, the league is very, very strong, and there's only so many games in the year, nine or ten games that teams can play between league and championship. So you need to, in my eyes, you need to put out your best team in, in most of those matches, bar injuries and stuff. So I was a little bit shocked by that. I think Kildare have improved under Glen Ryan, uh, which adds to the Leinster dimension, you know, adds something to the Leinster dimension that that is, you know, the Dublin kind of juggernaut or whatever. Uh, Mayo, Monaghan, a lot of good teams, and I think after what Tyrone did last year, a lot of teams will be saying, you know, have we a squeeze to possibly, maybe not win it, but to get close to get to a final or something like that. You know, Mayo, Monaghan, Donegal, you know, Galway, you know, like they'll all be looking at it and seeing the dubs are down. This is our chance. So uh, the league was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. I hope that the the kind of chat or the provincial championships can can live up to you know, the, the National League and maybe we can get some 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 decent games. I see Kerry, you know, or sorry, Munster and Leinster are probably foregone conclusions, but hopefully the other championships will be will be tight, tight affairs. 100%. And obviously it was a very exciting day on Sunday as well, Finian, and we're kind of, the outgoing opinion is we're probably not going to see a whole pile of that in the championship. So wouldn't it be great? Oh, jeez, probably are playing the face, but kind of need for change at this stage, Finian. But, you know, it really would go to show, like, if we could kind of get, get some set up where teams are for similar standard or playing each other in the championship, we're not going to see that to the semi final, final end of things, Finian. And that's a couple of months away at this stage, Finian. So Sunday was such an exciting day, and God knows what we're in for now for the next couple of weeks, Finian. Yeah, no, it's, it's, look, it's, it's you know, you, you can't be waiting. And we always talk, the semi-finals are, are good every year, really. You know, the final is strong, like tight games, Mayo, Dublin, whatever. But, like, up to that, like, you have quarter-finals that are damn squibs and you've got, particularly the provincial monster is, you know, foregone conclusion, really. Um, then, you you know, Leinster, maybe Kildare will trouble the dubs. But outside of that, I can't see it being, you know, anything other than that. You know, obviously you've got Ulster. It's just, look, it's it's so skewed, the whole thing. It's 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 complete. You know, when you think about it logically, you know, what the Ulster teams are going through and what Kerry are going through, it doesn't make any sense. And I know it, they're, they're adverse to change and all that. But, like, Jesus, you, you've got to just open your eyes. And, 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 and the, the other issue is, who's voting for this. You know, delegates are voting for themselves and in county boards and stuff like that. The players want to be playing the National League games style system because they're playing against top teams every week, week in, week out. Um, it's a better product. It just needs to change big time. And I don't see any argument other than that. Like provincial system was great and I played in it myself, but it's gone. And, and, and we have to move away from that. Every other sport evolves. GA has to evolve, it has to go into one kind of a ring and, and, and let it be, you know, as commercial as they can and have all these shows and stuff that, that highlights the different divisions. And uh, that's, that's the only way forward in my eyes. 100% opinion, but, I'd, be, uh, I'd, be, I'd be not for saying professionalism. I don't think we need to be professional. I don't think they need to be paying their players. There's another expenses debate going on and things like that. And they're all kind of easier things to, to fix. But 
I do think, you know, there's so much, there's so much of you guys, so much media getting paid to look at GA games and things like that. They want more, give them more, you know, give the whole thing a, a bit of fanfare around it. The stadiums are there, get lights into the stadiums and and, and start, I, look, I don't know, but that's that's my opinion anyway. Yeah, yeah, and unfortunately, Phil, you know, it's like anything else, that wall behind you would probably listen more to <laughs> the changes yeah, yeah, sure. and the things. Uh, we're going to sick, sick and early talk about it. Uh, briefly, uh, looking at uh, this weekend's at Crow Park, obviously, uh, you have Cavan against Tipperary, you have Loud against Limerick, you have Roscommon against Galway, and Kerry against Mayo. So, uh, we look at Division 4 firstly in my own county, uh, Finian. So, uh, we're really looking to try and get a win there. So, what would be the thoughts on that one? Yeah, yeah. Look, you know, it's it, it's an unfortunate situation. Both teams find themselves in, or you know, particularly after the bounce they got in, in twenty twenty and, and winning Ulster and Munster and stuff like that. So, but look, look at Derry. Derry were down. You know, they've they've rebuilt as well to come back up. And Cavan have been good. You know, we lost to to Cavan in a, in a, in a, to get up to Division One a couple of years back there. You know, they had. A, a, a super team. 2016. Uh, yeah. yeah, 2013 to 2017, Cavan were very, very strong. Do you know, they had a lot of players. Then they had the players that left. Um, do you know, you know, Riley and these guys that, that had walked away, or, or sorry, Keen Mackey and those boys who had walked away and stuff. So, um, and then they've had to rebuild as well. But look, there's loads of football in Cavan, as there is in Tipperary. They've shown it by winning their the provincial titles, you know. So, like, obviously, the, on the agenda is win next Sunday, get a league title, move up. A division and get back up to Division Two and back into the All Ireland series in 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 two years' time. I'd say that that's high on the agenda. Uh, you know, the the work that's been done in both counties over the last number of years is has 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 been serious. But um, these things happen. You get you end up you, you start sliding. It's very hard to to stem it when things are going against you. You know. But look, I think uh, it's a hard one to call on Sunday. It's a very hard one to call. Uh, I'm probably giving Tipperary the edge. I think they have a little bit more uh, experience, uh, you know, over the last couple of years. I think. Okay, we leave it there, opinion. Gareth McKeon, a fourth and fourth year, and you still have you still have you know some good players. I think Gareth McKeon is a top scorer again yeah, this year, yeah. carrying the team. Um, so it's it's it, it's a different one, but I'm giving the nod to Tipperary. I think the likes of Connor Sweeney will will drag them over the line. It was nice to talk to you, Finian. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And, I said I'd throw a spanner in the works early. <laughs> to, yeah, to be fair, I probably nearly would have. Well, not the same, like, uh, hopefully not the same prediction, but I really do think Tipperary is going to give it a lot of it. The better in the league already, so maybe Mickey Graham was doing a bit of shadow boxing or holding players in reserve, but it's going to be a very difficult game this Saturday, I feel. Uh, Limerick Cloud? Uh, Limerick Clouds, yeah, look, two teams that have really, you know, built like over the, like obviously Mickey Hart has gone into Loud and done an unbelievable job, just shows the manager he is and the way he's able to, the shock of him going in there in the first place, but, you know, Mulroy, he's turned him into an absolute gem of a footballer, there seems to be these f full forwards popping up around the country now, which is great to see, you know, it, it, a bit of Flair McGuigan and Derry like that are adding to Sweeney, you know, adding to Clifford's and all that sort of stuff. It's nice to have one in each county that's an absolute standout. Matt Latissier, as it were, in a small kind of a club, mm. you know, but it's it's uh, it's brilliant to see that he's an absolute mm. Rolls Royce of a footballer. But Mickey Hart's getting the best out of them. Small county. They're going to be playing Dublin next year. It's really exciting to, that Loud will be playing Dublin in the league. It's great. Limerick, um, obviously Limerick, Hurling County over the last couple of years, best in the country, one of the best teams of all time. It's very hard for your footballers to kind of get to that level. Billy Lee came in a couple of years ago, disillusioned with the whole thing, but he's, you know, he's steadied the ship and he's absolutely, you know, he's found that young Ryan player. Uh, I'm not sure if he's Ian Ryan's brother or not, but he's a he's a fantastic was fantastic at the weekend top scorer again. I think he was top scorer in most most games, but they're look, they're Limerick are are, are common common side. Uh, there's loads of footballers in Limerick, there's loads of sport in Limerick, obviously it's traditional county, so if they get the assistance that the hurlers have got, they, they, they can definitely make strides. At the weekend, I think just the Mickey Hart factor finals, I think he'll get them over the line uh, on, on, on Saturday, I think it is, Saturday, or, yeah. or, or, or Saturday whenever it's on, but I just think um, that, that the Mickey Hart factor will get loud over the line on, on, on Saturday. There we go, and moving on to Sunday, Russ Common against your native county. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, uh, after last weekend. I, it's, it's a hard one. We we picked a 
weakened team at the weekend. Uh, now, I don't think Porrick would be particularly happy, you know, losing and, and the manner of the defeat chipped a big score. So I don't think he'd be best pleased. He wasn't best pleased at half time anyway. I think there was a, a few uh, Fs and blind <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thrown in uh, the way we were playing in the first half. But look, it's it's uh, it's Gora Ross Common. It's always over the last, there's been nothing between the teams over the last five, six years in Connacht Championships, FPDs, and, and the league. So um, I'm give, or look, I'll give the nod to my own county. I think we're going well. They, you know, when we've got our full best bunch, I think Shane and Damien and Cole Park, very, very hard to handle if they get if they get clicking right. We'll have Paul Conroy back. You know, Sean Kelly will be tearing up and down that pitch on 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 Saturday or on Sunday. Be under no illusions. He's um, he's one of the best footballers we found in a long time. So um, I think look, we should have enough. But again. Ross Common can put up big scores. They've got shooters all over the park. They, you know, Murtas, Smiths, Harney, um, Young Carlina, who was ma- who was man of the match in the Sigerson final as well. So uh, Crow Park can bring you know can bring it out of players, and you know I think whoever whoever puts the scores on the board, uh, both teams can 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 score. I just think Galway will have a bit much around the middle of the park. And the very last one, Kerry and Mayo. Kerry Mayo is, yeah, look, I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be a brilliant game, huge game. Like, National League finals now have become, they're not all Ireland finals, but I think they've become very important to players. You know, to get a National League medal is a huge thing. So, given the way the league has gone, it's so hard to get to the final. To win it is is is, is, is would be amazing, I think. Um, but similar I think, strengths, look, similar team of strengths playing each other. <laughs> I think so, yeah. I think so, yeah. It's kind of like you've got the running machine and the, the absolute... Machine that is Mayo. Um, you know, players come from all sides, cornerbacks scoring two and three points, and then obviously you've got the potent forward line of 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 Kerry. So, uh, you know, it'll be interesting. It'll be doggy dog, O'Hara, American Clifford, you know, Mullen, you know, American Paddy Clifford. It's going to be there'll be some great great matches matchups on 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 Sunday. I'm actually giving the nod to my neighbours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> reluctantly mm. uh, I'm uh, I think I think Mayo will have enough uh, for Kerry on Sunday Mayo don't seem to fear Kerry at all they don't they won't be going you know with with, with blinkers on thinking Jesus we're up against uh, the mighty Kerry they'll have watched the wrong game they'll have seen the the, the the nuggets that they can get at in the Kerry defence um, and I think if they, they Mayo will feel if they win around the midfield battle they'll have plenty of runners coming from all sides uh, they put up a big score last weekend, which will help. I just think after the loss in Killarney, where they actually could have won, I think uh, they'll, they'll want to avenge that as well. And I think if they quieten, you know, Tony Brosnan, who's who's flying it, and uh, obviously David Clifford, um, I think they'll have enough to win by two or three. There we go, there we go. We're really looking forward to this weekend's action. I'm looking forward to the slag and the cab people are going to get. We're going to make a weekend of it and pay for the tickets and double headers and two games over the weekend, did <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Jesus, it'd be great. Yeah, I, I don't know what I'll get to yet, but uh, I'll definitely be watching most of the games. But uh, no, look, it's exciting. It's uh, these, the, you know, the, the, the finals, teams will want to win these finals. You know, they'll be looking at we're up and all that sort of stuff and the championship is coming. But look, when you're in a final, finals are there to be won because you don't win too many in your career, uh, believe it or not, unless you're from Kerry or Dublin or wherever it is. So look, you want to be notching some sort of medal, whether it's Division 4 or Division 1. Medals are medals, and when you look back, uh, you don't get too many of them in, in most counties. So uh, I think most most teams will be looking to go hammer and tongs on Saturday and Sunday. Hundred percent, Finian. So really, I'm really looking forward to this weekend's action. So I suppose we can touch on to yourself, uh, Finian. You represented the Galway Senior Footballers from 2005 to 2017, and you won three Connacht titles uh, with the uh, Galway Senior Footballers as well. So. Great times yourself, Finian. Obviously, we know the strength and power of uh, Galway football over the years. Huge battles with uh, Mayo in the last recent years, and obviously up until you probably retired as well. So, uh, probably the best days of your life. The best and worst, yeah. Uh, <laughs> look, uh, yeah, look, it was, it was you know playing Gaelic football and playing particularly for your county is a is a, is, a, is an honour. It's something you want to do when you're growing up and stuff like that. And it's always if you have any interest in it and you get to do it, it's great. I suppose, look, a lot of disappointment as well. I, you know, played at a time where we didn't win a lot. Uh, we lost, I think I played six Connacht finals. We lost four by a point. Uh, um, do you know what? It was a period of time where we were kind of transitioning out of those All-Ireland winning teams into newer teams and stuff like that. And the lads were kind of pushing on. And 
you know, we 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 had some chances to push on. If you you know, particularly in my first five or six years, and then we went through the barren spell from eleven to, to to fifteen, where Mayo just absolutely, you know, the James Horn machine came in and steamrolled us year in year out. Um, from 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 2011 to, to 2015 until Kevin came in and we kind of changed t- turned the tide again. So uh, you know up and down it's uh, it's uh, it's look intercounty football is tough. You you kind of like I got a lot out of it uh, and and certainly enjoyed it. You do put a lot into it as well. It's 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 more or less a full time job. When I started, it was getting more professional. As we moved on and you get older, you've got to look after your body to get you getting yourself on the pitch is the hardest part. You know, between mind and injuries and things like that. So, um, look, it's 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 super enjoyable. You meet a lot of people. You get to travel. You know, and all that sort of stuff. But it's uh, it's 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 taxing on the body as well. I don't think you'll be seeing very very long careers anymore. You know, Michael Murphy is kind of you know he's 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 kind of set the tone with regards to 14 or 15 years but like it's very hard without taking a break I think most players will take a break now or you know they play seven or eight years and that'll be enough because it's just uh I've seen the efforts I talk to some of the lads that are playing now and I see the effort they're putting in and you know it's just everything else is to the back to the back the back of their minds really when you're playing inter-county football but uh, no great times look great times uh and I said I wouldn't uh change them I'd have liked to have one one more but uh that's just uh, the way it is, you know. 100%, percent And obviously, kind of starting off on that kind of Galway team, and like knowing how tough Connor can be, obviously with yourselves and me, oh, the battles there. So to get your hands on three con titles was probably very impressive in that time. And but obviously, was common was getting very strong too. So you kind of starting off 2005, Finian. Was this something you always wanted to do? Represent the uh, Galway senior footballers? Uh, yeah. Look, when you when you start playing like football, you you kind of when you start getting into it when you're younger with your club and. I suppose I was lucky with the club I was and we were very successful. We won a lot with our club growing up. You know, we had very strong teams and uh, we were kind of got a winning feeling, you know, winning failures at underage, under All-Ireland and championships every year or whatever. So I think we, we, you know, that group of players we had growing up uh, gives you a kind of a bug that you can go on and, 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 and you know, gives you a good platform when you're playing with good players growing up. You get to, uh, you get to, you know, perform better and you get, you know, you, under 16s and minor teams and Galway minor teams and stuff like that, which gives you a, a good chance. So the club gives you a good chance when you're playing with that level of of player. Um, myself and Sean Armstrong kind of came on together and played minor and then under 21 for for a number of years. And then we ended up in the Galway panel in 04 with John O'Mahony just as extended panelists or whatever. But uh, yeah, no, then uh, then uh, I got injured then at the end of 04 and uh, I had we. We won the All Ireland Under Twenty One with Galway in, in, in early '05, but I I had just come back, so I didn't kind of feature in the early stages in the championship. But um, I was actually working in the bar at the back of the Pier Stadium for the Connacht semi final uh, that year, and uh, I was called into training the following night, and I was starting the Connacht final. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so that was kind of a strange one, and 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 that was kind of the start for me. Once once we won that Connacht final in '05, then. Uh, I kind of played most most up to uh, uh, 2015, then uh, most games or whatever. So uh, and then obviously petered out as uh, better players came and and the body started seizing up or whatever. But um, no, look, it was always something that I wanted to do. It was enjoyable. Um, you know, it was, I was committed to. It. it was great, great way to represent your county. You know, by playing 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 football with them, and uh, I got to uh, got to experience a lot of uh, good days and bad days. 100%, 100%. And obviously, kind of referring back to like the early days in 05, 06, 07. And as I said, a lot of former players, probably maybe up until maybe 2008, maybe when Dunny or Tyrone had that kind of defensive style of football or up until about 2011. So maybe up until 2011, Finney, and like it was very enjoyable. It was probably all out attack. I know you probably had your work cut out in the full back line, Finney, but at the end of the day, you weren't seeing much blankets and it was probably enjoyable football in the early 90s. I was, it was, yeah, yeah. Look, we, well, I suppose in 05, 06, and 07, we were defensive-ish. We Peter Ford to come in and we were trying to kind of emulate that. Now, look, we were very attack-minded with the players. We had the Clancy's, we had the Joyce's, you know, Michael Donlan. We were still, we still had that caliber of player that we wanted to move forward. It was actually 2008 and 2009 when Liam Salmon came in that was really, <laughs> uh, we'll say, uh, I won't call it kamikaze, but we were attack-minded. Uh, the mantra was you're in the full back line. I know myself and Kieran Fister were in the full back line, and it was 
carry every week. It was, it was, you know what, looking back, it was really enjoyable because you knew what you were doing. You were going out, you marked your man. There was acres of space. It didn't really matter. Like, I remember going up to Derry, marking Owen and Paddy Bradley one day. Like, geez, the first 10 minutes we were on yellow cards, it was just absolute criminals. Uh, uh, no, we we stemmed the tide. It took a while or whatever, but look, you had to you had to realise that there was there was rocky moments in a full back line when there when you were exposed, and I didn't know any different because my idea of playing the full back line was mark your man, and if you couldn't mark your man, then you weren't good enough to play. There was no such thing as you know getting bodies back and bringing sweepers in front of you. It was just all out attack. You know you were going to Donny Gall, marking Colin McFadden. You were marking Stephen McDonald up in Armagh, Bernard Brogan up in. Uh, yeah, like and look, you were shipping points, you were hemorrhaging points at times, you were playing well at times, you were, you know, it was a lottery. But you know what? It was really enjoyable because the buzz of getting out in front of those guys, you know, or trying to read the game was was super exciting. I found uh, for the game, but obviously the game changed then with regards to uh, defensive systems. But whilst look, it was it was you know he, he, you know a lot of uh, you shipped a lot of scores at times but it was enjoyable because you knew if you had the guys up front to put the ball over the bar then and you were getting wins then you didn't really mind mm-hmm. yeah like that's really interesting obviously coming up against the likes of Stephen McDonald, Bernard Brogan probably the best marksman we've really kind of seen play the game and obviously Bernard Brogan we all know about the achievements that man's won so Finian as you say when you're coming up against them like and probably when you're a young lad kind of watching on and seeing some of the great players and you wear marking some of the best players Finian so you're putting up you were putting yourself up against the best so that's when you know you're at your best own personal best I think so, yeah. Look, you could be playing well. You could think you're playing well against a Bernard Brogan or, or Stephen McDonald, but they score five points in play from the sideline or from the corner flag. You know, you'd be standing out, you're wasting your time. Uh, you know, Michael Murphy, these guys, they're just top class. And I look, I suppose I understand why we are now in the where we are with regards to getting bodies back and two and three men marking Conor McManus because Conor McManus left one, one v one. He's going to he's going to kill most players. And then you've got to rely rely on your midfield winning the battle. And look, if your midfield had a great day, you'd damn all to do because all the kickouts were being won and you had a lot of the ball. If your midfield were down and you're playing in a one and two man full back line, it's a long day. You know, all the fitness in the world isn't going to carry you. You know, you end up on cards, you end up fecking this, that and the other and, and, and getting black, you're getting sent off and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, needs must. It was needs must. But look, it was uh, you know if you had good days against players like that, you kind of gave yourself a pat on the back. But uh, uh, let's just say you'd have more bad days than you would good. But uh, enjoyable all the same. Hundred percent, Finian. Hundred percent. And obviously, getting your hands on on all the kind of titles you did get your hands on, and obviously we did know, but the power of Mayo over the years, and obviously that kind of lead frogged them on to maybe getting towards the latter end of the All Ireland campaigns, Finian. So to get your hands on the kind of uh, kind of titles you, you did get your hands on, like um, what was that kind of experience like? Because it is a re- really good journey, kind of propelled you really good for the All Ireland uh, series. So um, proud this. Yeah, look, you know, the few that I was involved in, look, I, I have a lot more regrets in Connacht than I do uh, positives, really, because I suppose it was finals there that we were ahead in injury time and we ended up losing, you know, so three could become six. Um, you know, you know, some we should have won or whatever it is. So, look, you know, particularly the first couple that we won uh, were great um, against, you know, strong Mayo teams uh, like Mayo, beating Mayo in 05, they had gone to the All Ireland final as well and stuff like that. But we never pushed on. We didn't win a quarter final for years and years and years. We've only won one since two thousand and one. Um and uh, you know, played Kerry under the rain in, in two thousand and eight. We did look oh, yeah. a couple of chances but uh, and really, really strong teams. But you know, you don't get over the line, you don't get over the line. But uh, no look a, a, a lot of regrets on, 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 on some parts of the journey because there was games there that we possibly could have won and we had some fantastic players playing at the time obviously Paul Joyce Michael Meehan and his pomp one yeah. of the best players always ever produced you know yeah. and for the likes of him not to have played in a semi-final or a final is, is he, you know he'd say himself it's very disappointing but uh, um, you know look look, winning Connor Championships now even though I'm an advocate for getting rid of the getting mm. rid of the thing at the time they were great they were the be all and end all Sligo were strong Ross Common were, were strong Mayo were strong you know Connacht was strong at the time so 
you know, there was a lot of big games there down in Markovic, down in, in Carrick and Shannon as well. But, uh, you know, you always relished playing against Mayo, you know, win or, win or lose. You always enjoyed going to Castlebar or then coming up to Galway because the crack is always great as well around the place. But the amount of Galway people, or the amount of Mayo people in, in Galway, you know. So, no, look, you know, they were, they were, they were, they were some gun days, but uh, we didn't win enough of them. Yeah, 100%. Can you tell me about some of them days against Mayo, Pipe and Hot Day and Castlebar, Salt Hill, anywhere at all, Finian? Put yourself up against the best, your arch enemy, and obviously the rivals, probably friends off the pitch, maybe, and but uh, definitely enemies on a uh, definitely enemies on a Finian. So obviously great days and uh, nice little line of Sublim. Yeah, look, it's the crack with the crack with the you know you know a lot of the Mayo lads and there's a lot of Mayo. Our local pub Anthony Finnerty has he's involved in our club, so there's a lot of Mayo in Galway. There's more more you see more Mayo people knocking around now than you do Galway people in pubs, but. Uh, it's um yeah no look it's it's uh, some 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 tough days you know like your your Mayo had some fantastic footballers obviously Aidan O'Shea is still there he he bowled us over one or two years uh, coming in my latter days or whatever it is but uh, yeah my debut definitely was a standout we 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 beat Mayo in, in Pierce Stadium I think it was thirty five degree heat Jeez. um you know it was thirty thousand it was it was it was proper iconic final you know mm. where you, you know the crowds were there and it was it was pipe and hot day and salt hill there was the good times we'll say the air shows were on and uh the celtic tiger was booming <laughs> so uh you know that was that that that, that, that was a good, that was an absolutely fantastic day. it kind of gave me the sniff that like we were a team that could go on and do something you know and we always believed in galway that we could you know on any year even when we were going bad that we could you know come from nowhere because in 98 they came from kind of nowhere as well mm. they lost the last two two championship matches and they were in the division three in the league so that's always in Galway and even this year I know in the dressing room they're there saying why don't we have a shot uh, I think Paul Joyce alluded to it uh, when he started out that you know he wanted to win in All-Ireland so there's always belief in Galway and people probably look at us going what are they on about like you know they're absolutely <laughs> they're, they're useless you know but uh you know that belief will always be there uh, for sort of, for whatever reason. I suppose you know the the the, her- the the history that's here as well. So we always believed we could win. You know most games against any team, and uh, um, that obviously didn't materialise a lot throughout my career. But uh, you know it's it, it's there, and it gives you that opportunity to kind of you know put it in every year because you always believe there's a chance. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and uh, like obviously playing with some of the players that you play with, the likes of Pork Joyce, Michael Meehan, and. Like supremely good players, and obviously Parks managing the Galway senior footballers at the minute, uh, Finian. So, what's it like to play with some of them, gents? Because obviously, like you obviously would have played underage football with them as well, but you learn so much from them on the training field, on the pitch, and uh, all around great fellas, Finian. Yeah, yeah. Look, they're legends in this in this in this town. They're you know heroes. Like they, they like Galway haven't done a whole pile before. They came along and a whole pile after, and. What they kind of the buzz they gave the county in ninety eight two thousand one. Porrick is Porrick is Porrick. He you know he'll tell you what it is. It's when we were young coming in. You know obviously we idolised, but we did exactly what we told Porrick. Come back and tell you get the ball, hand pass it out. That's it, and that's what you did because you know you did what you're told. Michael Donnan is the same. Just like I used to go to training because Michael lives. You know he was, he played with Salt Hill, and uh, you know just the way they trained and prepared. Um, two different type of player like Michael was very stringent in his training his diet his timing you know if you were a minute late for the car he'd drive off on you uh, <laughs> uh, Porek then would be a little bit different Porek would play through injuries and he'd train through injuries it didn't matter like he'd, he'd have his legs strapped up to the nines and he'd be doing the laps or whatever fitness training was to be done even after three all-stars and all that sort of stuff he was just gone he's just gone to the court there's no bigger Galway man than Porek Joyce which is kind of great and, and and Kevin Walsh as well you know it's great to have these guys as managers because it's more than football it's where they're so proud of where they're from you know but you know Ja, Sean of the it was great to play with those guys because you know they were never cocky or arrogant about what they did they were always looking to better Galway and they're always looking to better us as kind of younger players coming in as well and I'm still friendly with a lot of them which is which is which is nice you know so um no fantastic players like legends in this town you know it was just a pity they were a bit older when we were coming in and you know we weren't kind of there for for for, for their actual pomp you know but uh no it was great it was, it was great to get on the pitch with a lot of those players because they're legends 
100% opinion, 100%. And obviously, kind of like, what did you make of the standard maybe the, at the latter, latter end of your kind of uh, years picking and playing for uh, the goal of senior football compared to the start? Like, did a lot change? Because obviously, we see we hear so much tactics about defensive style of football, lads getting behind the ball, lads like playing in positions they've never played before. So, like, did it change much over the years? Because you did have a long career with the goal of senior football. It did, yeah, it did. I suppose one way it changed, like, Back, back, we'll say back in the late 90s, early 2000s, when I started playing club football, like it was very easy to see the county players in club football. So, like, you'd done more. Michael Donlan, a poor choice, was scoring 10, 11 points for his club. Sean Ogdepoor, they were real standout. Club scene was huge, and you had to really be the standout performer for your club. I think in the latter stage of my career, you go to club games, sometimes the county players wouldn't be playing for whatever reason, because they might be minding themselves for the championship or they wouldn't play in league games because they had to be in learning systems with the counties and things like that. So, um, you know, you don't, it's not as easy to pick out the county players in club games now because the individual brilliance of a Porrick or a Michael or a Ja is kind of gone because, you know, it, it's systematic now, the whole process. So it's more how you fit into that. You're fitter, you're faster, but like, you know, you, you don't have to go back to the club now and be the best player to get on the county team because in the county setup, you're reaching the targets of your fitness and your all that sort of stuff, and you're able to fit into the system. Um, now, obviously, you, you know, you've got standouts like Damien and Shane that can turn it on, but like at that time, you had 15 players going back to the club, and you know, Brian Silk was cornerback for Curfin, and he was outstanding, clean and whatever man he was on because he had to, because he was the county cornerback. Ray Silk, the same, and things like that. So, Across the board, it's very hard now to pick out county players if you go to a club game here, I find. I'm not sure how it is around the, con around the country, but you don't have that calibre of standout player because they're always in with the county learning the system and getting up the pitch together, down the pitch together. There's a lot of hand passing, so you don't see that level of brilliance. Yeah, bang on, Finian, bang on. And I suppose kind of, as the years kind of push on, and obviously we've seen a lot of young players coming in, coming into the Galway setup, like the, a lot of the under twenties and minors, and very successful underage teams. Uh, Finian, I suppose so. Like kind of pushing on, like what was maybe the kind of cumulative factor for you to finish up the Galway footballers, or was it just injuries? Or ah, uh, yeah. Look, I, I, uh, we were in Portugal, and I ruptured my posterior cruciate in a collision or whatever, and. Uh, yeah, it was look. That was kind of my last year. I know I young kids and stuff like that, and it's just better players are better. Do you know what I mean? And like I was limited footballer anyhow, so I needed very limited. So I needed if I was to be playing with Galway at all, I had to have every faculty. I had to be. I always felt myself that I had to be first to training. You know, all my rehab prehabs done. I had to be the fittest. I had to be. You know, I had to have all that sort of stuff because I. You know, I didn't have the ability of most players. So if I didn't have one or two of those things, it was a waste of time. I wouldn't have made it in the first place. So once I wasn't able to fit all those things in because I couldn't buy, I couldn't buy skill anywhere. It wasn't there. Uh, uh, and you're not going to get it. And obviously you're not going to get faster as you go along. You're getting slower and this, that and the other. So when I couldn't, you know, put all that stuff together as I moved on, then I was a waste of time anyway. So look, you cut your losses then. You say, you know, now you're into... You got some cleanings in the past, but now you're into real dangerous territory. Get out before you you make a, a holy show of yourself. So uh, once I did the posterior cruciate, I was kind of hanging on. I was a sub anyhow, so I was kind of going, look, you need to be, you know, at the, at the, at the top of your game here to, to be playing. So um, particularly with kids at home and things like that. So I just said that, you know, that was it. You know, it's disappointing always to finish up because you always think you can go on for forever. Uh, I played a few years with the club. I finished up last year. So uh, the knees have given in. It's time to get them sorted. So, um, yeah, look, it's it's uh, some, some some good days. But uh, that was kind of the reason I, I, I packed it in the end. Yeah, 100% opinion. And obviously, interesting to hear your perspective. And obviously, you're a few years gone from the county game. But like, is it like a healthy obsession for a lot of lads? Because obviously, as you said, it is a full time job with no pay realistically. So, like, is it healthy for a lot of lads? Like, you've your your eating plans, you've did runs, your gym. Like, is it just gone a bit mad for you? It is. Yeah. No, it's not, it's not, John. It's not. It's not healthy at all. It's not healthy at all. Um, you know, it becomes an obsession, and you know, I suppose after you finish, like it's 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 hard to fill that, you know, because you're you know particularly with training and stuff, and 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 now you're going for a run or you're going doing a, you know, you're so used to that team 
ethos and training for something and you put so much into it that everything else becomes irrelevant and I think most lads will say the same everything else becomes irrelevant and obviously you know it's very it, it can be hard for people after to to, to, to adjust um, I do think now it's become like you know crazy what's going on you know there's a lot of training sessions there's a lot of gym sessions things like that so um, you know and, and and whether we say it or not the, the, the the downtime in the season isn't downtime because when you finish like you spend and when just say the season is over you spend the next month thinking about that season that year then you might get a text message from the manager saying we have a meeting to review the season and we'll be back in five weeks there's no real off season from mentally physically there's no real off season because then you start trying to get any injuries right and things like that i remember going away i used to go away uh, after the club scene in, in october and november for two or three weeks and like i'd be out on holidays in wherever somewhere hot or whatever and I'd be up and down the pitch running in you know, 100 metres in, in 30 degree heat for whatever reason my wife would be saying what are you doing like will you chill out like well no, no I want to get make sure that when I get back I've a uh, level that's just the way it is you know so it becomes an obsession and then the years roll into the next year the next year the next year next year you're 10 years and you're stuck in, 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 in and you haven't taken a break and the body starts breaking down so I don't think it's a healthy obsession to be honest but yeah uh, uh, you know, and I think players need to be educated on that a bit more, and there needs to be a proper break for players, in my opinion. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and yeah. So that's what I was kind of thinking. And obviously, there is so much debate at the minute. Like, and obviously, the GPA is having a bit of a a standoff with the GA about expenses. And like, Jesus Christ, Finian, it's such a handy thing. And I think you were talking in the GA hour with Darren Sullivan about it. Like, just you know, give the players the few pounds. Christ, Finian, the pack stadiums, the pack Crow Park, they give us entertainment at the weekend. Get it sorted out, lads. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, look, there's, there's a couple of different arguments to this, and I've heard a few, and since that podcast, people have said to me, geez, as well, you know, hold on a second, that's not the point, blah, blah, blah. And I, 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 I look, I, I get all the arguments, but if you have to go to a session, and I think people outside of the loop don't understand the half to part, like if you've got a strength and condition coach on 50 grand a year, and he wants you there three times to justify his role, you have to be in Lock George or you have to be in the Kerry Centre of Excellence. And he wants you there because oh, I want you out in Lock George, which is our training facility on a Tuesday or on a Wednesday and a Friday to do the gym session because I need to monitor you or whatever it is, because that justifies my role as S&C coach because I'm getting paid. Then you've got to pay them expenses for it. It's simple. The flip side of that is stop that nonsense and say you can't have these sessions. You can only have two, one gym session and two three sessions a week that are collective, the rest are done yourself in your own gym or your own time and you give them a subsidy for that or whatever it is. Simple as that, you know, but you can't blame the players when they're made go somewhere. It's, you know, it's not the player's fault. Talk to the county boards, talk to the managers and say, why is your SNC coach making you go to, making a guy from Litchermore, which is out west in Galway, go to Loch George, 50 miles to a training session and then you're not willing to give them expenses. That doesn't make any sense. So stop the nonsense or pay the players. You know, both, both arguments work, but like, don't just say the players don't deserve it. The price of fuel now is up through the window. So, you know, I think give them the money if they have to go somewhere or don't make them. Yeah, it's funny with the price of fuel. I'm surprised there's not been a few calf jokes. I'm surprised the whole calf team hasn't uh, stopped playing. Are you still because still laundering up there. Or, <laughs> <laughs> uh, or no, is that no. Monaghan? Uh, probably, but, but more, more than us, more than us. You can but show I, dig now, you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying, Finian. I'm, I'm in for it this weekend, play the crow, or the lads play the crow park, but mm -hmm. there's some the cabin lads have got a bit of uh, slagging about the cost of uh, the fuel going up and expenses and this, that and the other, Finian. But uh, yeah, we could touch on to the international rules as well, Finian. You seem to really enjoy that because Christ, you're, you're on the team a lot of the time. So we'll wait 2010, 2011, 13 and 14, Finian. So... It's a nice wee break, but the training did sound tough. Yeah, no, I I, re, I, I did enjoy that. Uh, I did. Look, it was a privilege for the likes of me because, you know, like we weren't featuring at the latter end of the championship, so we were knocked out or whatever. So it gave me kind of that, you know, we weren't in the run for All-Stars or anything like that because we were part of the championship very early most years. So it kind of gave you, that was kind of, you know, to prove yourself to be able to compete with the best or whatever it was. So, you know, when I was first asked in in 08 to, 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 to trials, you you know, it was real kind of a, you could have a right cut here and, and, and make it alongside the best players in the country. So, 
Um, no, look, Sean Boylan was the manager in, in, in 2008. It was an absolute brilliant experience over in Australia. We were there for five weeks and um, it, was, it, no, it was fantastic. And it just gave me kind of same. I enjoyed the game as well. The game kind of suited me because, you know, it, it, like if the ball bounced, it was great because, you know, they couldn't call marks and stuff like that. So getting a hand in, which was my kind of awkwardness or whatever it was, uh, gave me the chance to kind of, uh, it, it, you know, better myself. But I, I, I enjoyed that part of it. Um, and obviously pulling a dragon and suited me down to the ground. <laughs> uh, so, so look, it was a game that kind of suited me. But um, no, Jesus, I had some, uh, some, some brilliant times. I was in Australia. We were in Australia three times. Mm. Um, the first year, obviously, we won the series by a point, like packed stadiums, MCG um, in the Subiaco in Perth, 50,000, like, you know, massive Irish crowds yeah. and, and all that sort of stuff and the fanfare and all that. And even at home, actually, Cabin 2013 was one of the best <laughs> series that I was involved in. Um, I was actually marking Buddy Franklin. Lance Franklin, who scored the thousand goal, I don't know, did you see it on uh, when they they mobbed the pitch on on the oh weekend, yeah yeah, which was an experience, but uh, like that was brilliant as well, and we played in Limerick under lights and like some of those games just showed you what what the under lights experience can be around Ireland, and Limerick was brilliant, and Cavan was brilliant, so no really enjoyable. Got to got to vice captain in twenty ten, and I, you know, room and you know like got to play with the likes of Stephen McDonald, Michael Murphy for years. You know all those sort of players, and you learned a lot with them. You know, and you know Kieran Kilkenny and these guys, Kieran Donaghy. We still, you know, uh, we you know we still meet up now and again. But the the the, the crack on those tours, great. And, I, and and you know, I suppose it's grand for a lesser player like me to say that it was great. But but the guys who won a lot, the Donaghy, the McDonalds. You know, if you were to ask them, they really loved it as well, which was mm-hmm. great to see because they had all the accolades, they had everything that football could give them, but. You know, they would be big advocates of, of international rules. Anthony Toll, all these guys, they loved the way it was to come and play for Ireland with the best players in the country. The professionalism of, of it, you know, four weeks out in Australia, you know, the training. And it was never a kind of a case where lads went offside or lads, you know, said, Irish oh, sure, it's only this, that and the other. It was taken so seriously. Mm-hmm. We took it so seriously. We prepared so well. It was... Uh, and we enjoyed ourselves, don't get me wrong. We were in the Gold Coast in Sydney after the events. We always had a week and, you know, the crack was brilliant. But uh, no, look, really super enjoyable times, yeah. And what was Cavan like in 2013? <laughs> Jeez, we had a great night in Cavan that night. Uh, the night, there was a nightclub, but I don't think it closed uh, till nine o'clock in the morning. But uh, no, look. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah no, that, I, won't name, I won't name it, but uh, it no, was suit. Yeah, that was a super, 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 super night. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I hadn't been, uh, we were staying in the sleeve of Russell and the crack was brilliant that night or whatever and we were heading to Crow Park the following week. But, uh, you know, the nights of the games because you train, train, train and then yeah. you get to have a good blowout and the crack with the last year, look, you know, at that time of the year was brilliant. So, no, I, I, that was one of my biggest memories of international rules, Cavan Town for the crack. <laughs> Jesus, Finn, you did it. That's a nice shade of yeah, hundred percent. Jeez, any time, my man, any time. Uh, and yeah, just that competition itself, uh, Finian. Like it, it don't. Like, I know it's probably. Well, let's be honest about it, Finian. Probably has gone down to Swanee to a degree in the last couple of years. Like, like the exposure for us. Like, if we could try and get a bit more media attention for us, people buying in, maybe players kind of buying into it a bit more, Finian. And obviously, we've seen the likes of maybe Bernard Brogan, captain fifteen, exposed a bit more. Jeremy Connolly was involved too. So that's probably what that needs, Finian. Uh, yeah, no, it does. It does absolutely. Yeah, it does. It needs. It needs the best players playing. And I think I'm not sure where it's going after this. Uh, obviously, with travel restrictions, everything has been curved. Is it coming back? I don't know. But um, you know, I think a lot of the big players want to play it now. And I know Australia had all, an all All Star team over the last number of years. And I think Ireland are kind of similar to that. They're trying to get the best players playing. So look, it's. Uh, you know, like I think a lot of the players, if it came back in the morning, I think a lot of the players would want to play, you know, even the top players, regardless of how long the season is. So, um, yeah, no, look, it's 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 something that um, definitely should continue. Uh, it's, 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 you know, people have mixed reviews on it and things like that, but the players certainly want to play it, yeah. The lifestyle, the good weather, a couple of beers each night, and, uh, oh, did you find it hard to come home? <laughs> Uh, not really, no. Australia was uh, grand. Not, yeah, it was. It was nice to see it, but uh, no, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, you know, for for what it was, it was great. I'm not sure it's a place I'd like to live, but uh, 
uh, no, it's uh, the crack is the, the the crack is good down there, particularly on those sort of things because it brings a lot of the Irish together. And uh, yeah, no, it's 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 big fanfare down there because obviously you have a lot of Irish people in Australia as well. So. 100%, 100%. And obviously, uh, touching on to your club, Salt Hill and Cara, and obviously you did win an All-Ireland Club title in 2006, uh, Finian. It's where you start, it's where you finish, and by the sounds of it, you finished last year, but do might get a couple of years out of you yet? Uh, yeah, no, I've, uh, I've kind of half joined the management team at the minute. Oh, there we go. Not, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's this year, so we'll see how that goes or whatever. But yeah, no, look, as you say, where it started, I played for 20 years. Uh, that's a lifetime, and uh, that was well enough for me. I think, uh, as I said, even at club level now, I was struggling. So I, um, yeah, no, I said it's time to. Um, but again, yeah, underachieved. The club, our club, underachieved. You know, we won two championships. We we've been underachievers for a long time. We did win the All Ireland in two thousand and six, which was, you know, amazing and all that. But. Uh, uh, as a club, we're at senior level. We're 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 way below par. So we never built on that success. Um, we did go on to win another championship, but um, you know we haven't really put anything relevant together. A couple of finals here and there, but nothing major. So uh, there's a lot of work to do. We've huge underage numbers. I think we're one of the biggest clubs in the country, about twenty eight thousand people. <laughs> uh, so um, you know, you know something's not making sense with regards to the numbers and. Uh, um, yeah, so there's a lot of work going into the underage, but it's trying to get players from minor to senior is very difficult over here for some reason. And uh, that's where they're trying to do now. And over the years, we've had a luxury of blow-ins, you know, from, from different parts of, of the country and different parts of the county coming to live in the area, which has helped as well. But uh, um, we've struggled without that uh, since we've kind of trying to get, you know, our underage coming together and, and uh, as a positive senior team. Uh, has been very difficult. So, um, but look, no, I, I, you know, obviously, 06 was a, a standout, standout uh, occasion. We rode our luck at times, but uh, uh, and obviously, the likes of Michael Donlan, Sean Armstrong. When you've players like that, you have a chance. So, we had a fantastic team. We'd Gordon Morley, Morris Sheridan, Jamie Crow, like really, really top players. So, when the stars align like that, you, you, you know, you can get it and get a bit of luck, which we did. All Ireland's are all about luck as well. So, um, we got that that year. I suppose what does your club mean to you because obviously when you did retire in 2017 you go back to your club and you probably don't really see your kind of club teammates when you are on the county team as we probably all know that Finian so you suppose it really is special and I suppose it's important for people to really treasure because as I did say at the start it's very finish. Ah, it is yeah look it's 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 I suppose it's, it's everything to us really it's um you know like you know I give out a lot of times of where we're at and how we underachieve but look for me it's been, you know, the, the the bedrock. It's it's, you know, just not just with football, but like, you know, whenever you need anything or help, wise, like we're we're very very close to our club, you know, um, for, for since I was six or seven years of age. So, you know, you're talking thirty years to be involved in something, and it's kind of a home, you know, club. Your club is kind of a home. It's somewhere you call in, you know, if you want to. If you, if you need anything, you kind of call in, and there's someone there that will be able to help or whatever it is, you know. So it's. Uh, you know, and the door is always open and you're always kind of welcome, which is great. So it's like the church, you can just pop in <laughs> pop out of here, or, or the synagogue or whatever you're into. But it's uh, no, it's a, it's a, it's it's it, look, you know, it's given us a lot. And, uh, um, uh, you know, to go back and play the few years was great as well. Um, you know, we, you know, we've we've a fantastic club in Salt Hill, um, a lot of really good people, a lot of good friends as well. We were just in New York actually. Um, one of our Sean Armstrong's father who passed away a couple of years ago we played New York in a memorial match there last Friday uh, and uh, it was kind of a trip that was organised two years ago but you know it was fantastic to go away there was people from you know all ages uh, you know of, of a club so like you kind of know people from people in their 80s to you know you know training kids who are 10 and 11 so it's a real lifetime experience with the club which is great and as i said it gives you so much and it gives you the the chance to go on and represent your county so i'm i'm very grateful to salt hill uh as most players would be to their own club you know 100 percent and obviously a man of the match in the all Ireland club final as well so you we were busy that day say that again or are you a man of the match in the all Ireland club final in 2006 you must have been busy that day yeah, yeah, that's a bit of a bonus. That's uh, yeah, 
that was kind of uh, the game was seven six, so like it was probably the lowest score in all Ireland club final of all time. So I think it was just give it to a back, and uh, <laughs> it wasn't that I was outstanding. I think Michael Donnellan was really the outstanding player, particularly in the second half. But uh, I think they kind of said, "Well, look, it's such a bad game. We better give it to a back because uh, <laughs> it's, so, it's so low score." But look, you know, history will remember that. <laughs> Uh, Mike, myself, Michael Donald, a bit of crack about that, all right. Yeah, he tried to walk out of the house with the, <laughs> the uh, but anyhow, look, yeah, no, it was uh, it was a nice one to get, but uh, again, it was a cold day and it was uh, it was um, it was a low scoring, but uh, no, we got over the line in the end. Uh, St. Gall's a good team, they went on to win one as well, so uh, oh, yeah. we, we you, you can't look a gift horse in the mouth, and with the players we had, we kind of had to do it that year because it wasn't going to come back for us, you know. 100% Finian 100% you've been brilliant with your time Finian uh, nice easy one to wrap up you love me for asking this one uh, the toughest player you played against and the best player you played with oh toughest player to play against Michael Murphy uh, yeah Michael there, Murphy yeah. Yeah. yeah well because I, I marked him a good few times and sure look it's a complete nightmare uh, best player I played with for Galway anywhere at all yeah Oh God! Uh, I'm the best player I played with Galway. Probably Michael Donlan because I played with him with the club, the county. Uh, absolute nightmare to play and mark and anything like that. And you know, would still be able to do it today. Uh, fantastic footballer, um, all over. But you know, like he 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 was an absolutely unbelievable footballer. Um, yeah, he was the he was the best player I played with. Very last question. There's a young uh, Finian Hanley uh, starting around the country, making the breakthrough onto the county team, club team, anywhere at all. What kind of advice would you give them? <sighs> take up darts. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, it's 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 you know, it, it, look, it, there's no substitute for hard work. I know it's an old cliche, but like I, as I said, I was borderline average footballer, um, whatever it was. But I suppose. All my, you know, hard work and uh, hard work, really, and just, you know, putting putting in the hours yourself, ball alleys, uh, going to the gym, all that sort of stuff, you know, getting yourself to a level where you can compete and, you know, you have a chance if you're fittest, fastest, strongest, you know what I mean? You might be the most skillful, uh, but, you know, particularly in the full back line, if you're committed to and, and you think you can do it. You can do that because you can learn how to disrupt players and learn how to read the game and things like that. It's obviously a lot harder to be to be more skillful. Either you have that or you don't, you know. So uh, I would say, you know, you know, if you can get to the ball at and be that two seconds quicker at getting out in front and things like that, then then that all helps. It, all the stuff you do outside of the training will help you. Um, and that's where I kind of uh, tried to, to to make the wins, you know, when, when people weren't watching. Um, you, you know, then that's you know, you'd arrive to training. You might have a bit of an extra edge then in your head, at least. So I would say work hard outside of the time you, you spend with your team. Super stuff, Indian. Super stuff. Thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is brought to you by orgoretch.com and attack the D. Use the promo code JMAC podcast to get 15% off on orgoretch.com. I get the best skins, gloves, equipment on attack the D. Be attack minded. And if you like what we've seen, like and subscribe on YouTube because the sport's been absolutely brilliant so far. Finian Hanley, thank you very much. Thanks, Sean. Talk to you.